In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to adjust the brightness, saturation, and color of part of the video frame. Have you ever wanted to make the sky a little bit more blue or the grass a little bit more green without affecting the rest of the video frame? Let's get into it. Delivering informative capability-based reviews and tutorials on camera gear, filming techniques, and content creation. Hi, I'm Simon, and this is The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, subscribe to get notification of new videos like this one as they come out. And all the links to everything I talk about in this video, including gear discussed, are placed in the description down below. But before I get into today's tutorial, a quick note about this Canon 50mm f1.8 STM lens that I'm giving away. If you'd like a chance to win it, subscribe to my channel. That's it. That's all you have to do. More details about this contest can be found in the description down below. Last week, I published this video showing you how to fix your video's white balance. At the end of that video, I promised I'd explain in a future tutorial how to mask and apply color and brightness changes to a portion of the frame. I know masks can sound scary. They did to me when I first started using them. But after this tutorial, you'll be able to use them without difficulty. This tutorial is just as easy as the one I created last week. Now, I'm not going to cover every detail that I did in that video about white balance. We're just going to, I'm going to make the assumption that you've watched that video and you know how to do white balance. But if not, go back and watch that video before starting this one. Now, this tutorial is aimed at the ordinary filmmaker. I've got one goal. Show you how to apply color changes to one part of the video in a tutorial that's easy to follow and that you can apply to your own workflow. We won't get into draw masks. We won't get into animation. This scope is simple. Stay with me and you'll learn this powerful editing technique to step up your filmmaking skills. I'm going to use myself as a subject in this first example. I need to apply brightness changes to a small portion of the video. Now this video is relatively simple. It's not complex at all. There's no complex background and I've already balanced the video. I've already balanced the video as you can see. If you don't know how to balance your video, just watch this video here that I created last week. The link is in the description down below. Step one, go up to the color inspector and add color wheels. Kind of scary, aren't they? They're very intimidating at first, but you won't be scared of them by the time you've watched this tutorial. Let's play with them. Take the midtones, for example. On the right side of the wheel, it's for adjusting brightness. Move up to increase brightness, down to decrease brightness. Notice how the slider moves. These controls are sensitive. Hold down the Option key when moving the slider for more incremental adjustments. This will help you get the look you need. The left side of the wheel is for adjusting saturation. Just like the other side, move up to increase saturation and down to decrease saturation. Saturation controls the intensity of the color. Low intensity gives you a, well, a washed out look, faded look, and almost dreamy look. It can also make your footage seem like it's, well, it was shot a long time ago or in a far off locale, or it's very hot outside. High saturation makes things come alive. Now, this is very subjective. There really is no right and wrong. There's different filming techniques. Some people like a desaturated look, while others like a more vivid look. Don't worry about getting things perfect. Just become familiar with the controls. I'm going to repeat it in three different scenarios in this tutorial. For this clip, I'm going to focus on brightness. Now, notice how every adjustment affects the entire frame. My face often gets very red when I'm filming, so I need to take care of that. I need to desaturate my face while bringing up the brightness just a little. The rest of the frame is fine. This is where the mask comes in, allowing me to control the color and saturation of my face, leaving the rest of the frame alone. To add a mask, make sure the video inspector is selected. Then click on the mask, followed by selecting the shape mask. Use the center gadget to move the mask around. Then adjust the size of the mask using these gadgets. Don't worry about making it perfect. Not so scary, is it? I'm concerned with getting the inner shape to cover most of my face. This is where most of the adjustments will be focused. The brightness adjustments slowly fade to zero by the time it gets out to the outer shape. If you want to reduce the range of the effect, adjust the size of the outer shape like this. It does not need to be perfect in this example as I'm moving around a bit in the frame. Yep, that looks pretty good. I'm going to soften the redness by lowering the brightness in the highlights. There, just like that. To compensate and brighten up my face a little, I'll increase the brightness in the midtones. There, just like that. For your use, 
Try minor adjustments until you get the effect you need. After making a few adjustments, it's good to get some perspective. If we turn off the mask, we can see the adjustments applied to the entire frame. The changes are subtle, but they're there. You can also invert the mask so that the adjustments are applied to the rest of the frame, but not the area that you've masked off. I also like to toggle the adjustments on and off to see the overall change, and you can do this from the video inspector. Before going on to the next example, it's important to understand the difference between shadows, midtones, and highlights. This image pretty much sums it up. Shadows include the areas where the light is the least intense. Want to bring up the brightness or saturation in a very dark area of the frame? Focus on the shadows first. Want to adjust the sky or the grass on a bright sunny day? Well, you'll want to focus on the highlights first. The midtones is pretty much everything in between the shadows and the highlights. Now let's use the same shape mask to make the sky more blue without affecting the trees. Just like before, go up to the color inspector and choose color wheels, followed by selecting the color mask. This time we need a rectangular shape mask. We can create a rectangle by using this gadget here. Just drag it until the shape becomes square. Then fiddle with the shape until we have it just right. Don't worry about perfecting the shape mask until you've adjusted the colors as you'll likely make some final adjustments then. We can adjust how much we want the effect to trail off. Now let's increase the saturation to deepen the blues. There we go. After you get the color right, play with the mask size and position. Play with the flange too. You can see that as I bring the flange into the trees, there's a slight change in the leaf color towards blue, but not overly so. Don't be too afraid of this. Most people will focus on the nice blue sky and not really see how your greens have adjusted a little bit to the blue. Next time you watch the travel show, watch their use of this effect. Now let's do this one last time with the grass. Position the mask as we did before. Stretch it out. It takes a little bit of fiddling to get it just right. This process is always a bit fiddly. I want to cover the grass with the main mask, letting the flange fade into the shrubs. That's good enough for now. I'm not going for perfection. The last thing we want is a 60 minute video on applying color masks. I just want to make sure you understand the basics and to see how easy it is to apply a mask. Now let's make the green pop. We'll at first adjust the highlights, and then the midtones. No need to adjust the shadows as the grass is nicely exposed. That's a little bit too green. Let's tone it down. This is where holding down the option key is very helpful. There, that looks better. Let's go back to the video inspector. Turn off the mask outline. Perfect. See how the grass now comes alive? I'm not here to tell you how to grade your videos. It's very personal. Some like a desaturated look while some like bold and vivid colors. Practice your use of color masks to get the results that you're looking for. Next time, I'll show you how to change the color of the sky and the water. And I don't mean adjusting the saturation and brightness. I mean giving your water instead of a dark color more of a tropical look. But I do have a challenge for you. Take what I've taught here and apply it to your own videos. Upload them to YouTube and put a link in the comment section down below. And I'll include them in a behind the scenes video in, or behind the scenes segment in upcoming videos. But please, don't add any music or I'll have to delete the full audio track. You might have a license for your music, but I won't. And I already got in trouble once before doing the spring challenge. Earlier this week, I told you that I was having some trouble being able to export the subscribers from YouTube to be able to randomly generate a winner. Well, I've solved that problem. I manually copy them out of the dashboard. Looks like a lot of fun, doesn't it? Then I need to scrub the data so I could import them into a database to be able to randomly generate a winner. I created a Perl script to do this, but I haven't coded in Perl in 20 years now. 20 years ago, I was quite adept to Perl. I made programs that were as big as 14,000 lines of code. This little bit of code here took me three hours to perfect. Yeah, it's not a lot to it, is there? Three hours. But look at the results. 
I have the subscriber's name, which is very important. The date they joined, not so important. The number of subscribers they have, again, not important. And a unique identifier, which is also useful. Now I have to come up with a solution to take this data and generate a winner. I'll give you more information on that when I find a solution. But so far, is this working? Well, there's several metrics here to measure the success of this. One is increased number of subscribers, and yes, I've seen a definite improvement. In fact, the number of subscribers per day has gone up by about tenfold. I'm getting anywhere between 150 to 250 subscribers each day. But is that translating to increased views? And is increased views translating to increased revenue? That's really kind of hard to tell right now. I probably need a good 20 or 30 days to really know if that's true. Why does that matter? Well, we all like to increase our revenue, right? That's a positive. It gives me more money for me to invest in the set. The R5 that I told you that I was going to get with kit and everything is probably going to cost around 10,000 US dollars. I can't take that out of my regular budget. So having that income really helps me improve the channel. But it also gives me money to, well, provide you guys with better prizes in the future. And I've had a little bit of a thought here. I did a poll last week asking what camera you would like to see me do next, and I listed everything up to the R5. And what I think I want to do, and this is not because I'm afraid of the cost of these prizes, I'm, I want to focus on prizes that are aimed at the ordinary filmmaker. The R5 is a great camera, and if somebody does win that, once they realize the cost of certain lenses, it might be a lot more difficult to operate and run. And if I think of prizes like the Nifty 50 or the 24 millimeter, or other lenses, other things that are going to be, well, aimed at the ordinary filmmaker, which is what my channel is about, I think that appeals to more people. The 90D is a great camera. The uh, Rebel 8 T8i, I always say 8Ti, but the T8i, these are cameras aimed at the ordinary filmmaker. Now, I know a lot of you are professionals. You use high-grade equipment. I've got some of you that got C300, C500s, a bunch of um, hybrid cameras, uh, you've got Sony cameras, you've got some amazing stuff and you work in the profession, but this is first and foremost the ordinary filmmaker and, and deals with the ordinary filmmaker and photographers, so I really need to make sure that my primary audience is getting the prizes that appeal to them most. Now, if you guys happen to win these and, you know, this is not the type of product you could use, you could always donate it to somebody else or sell it, so there is that. So again, my first priority is to the ordinary filmmaker. Now in terms of my content, if you look at the beginning of each video, that's pretty much my vision. It's to deliver news, rumors, reviews on camera gear, filming techniques, and content creation. But there is a bit of a priority to this. Now obviously today this is a tutorial, and I don't think it's going to get us a lot of views, and I don't care. I love learning. Uh, in this video, believe it or not, I actually learned a few things myself about masks because I don't use them all that much. I use them in my own limited view. And it was it's broadened my scope. I've started using masks more on outside where I never really did before, and it allows you to take those greens and make them pop. Now, I used to cheat in the past. What I would do is I would just basically affect the entire frame, and if it blew out the sky a little bit, eh, it's for my son. No one's going to really notice. But now, doing this tutorial, I'm going like, yeah, it's not hard to throw a shape mask on there. I'll just throw up a, uh, a, co well, a color mask, I'll change it to a rectangular and bring it out, and it's really quite simple to do. But I'm going to be honest with you. The bread and butter that pays for this channel, it comes from news and rumors. You guys vote every day by what you click on. And anything that is new, for, coming from Canon, the R5, the R6, from Sony, the A7, whether it's the A7S 3 or the A7 IV, or anything new, those videos will just go crazy. It's pretty get guaranteed that I'm going to get north of 5,000 views in the first day and as many as 8,000 views in the first day. So news, the news cycle is going to drive the priority of what gets put out there. That doesn't mean I'm not going to do tutorials. My goal is to, do, to work on the tutorials on the weekends because there's not a lot of news coming out. And there's another video that I've started doing, question and answer segments. I like these. I wanted to do live views, but the more I looked into it, the cost of doing live views, and they don't really get you a lot of views. I thought, well, let's take that. Let's take the best of what's in a live view and the ability to, to interact with you, the ability to interact with the audience. So you still get to ask me questions. Uh, usually a couple of days before I start filming, I'll put out a community poll or a 
question saying, what questions would you guys like answered? And then I usually take a good six or seven of them and I put it into a video, which I'm going to film tomorrow. So yesterday I think I had like 22 comments and in those 22 comments there was a total of about seven questions. And I, so I, that's kind of my answer to live streaming. I'm not going to get into live streaming anytime soon. There are some situations where live streaming is very appropriate. For example, Canon's live press event, I'm assuming it's going to be a live press event, that would be something that would be great to live stream. Well, my 70D without a lot of money is not going to do live streaming and I'm not going to use my Mac, even though it's a pretty good computer, the quality of the video coming out of that thing is embarrassing. So I'm not going to use the webcam off that. And just one more thing I want to mention. About a couple of weeks ago, I started putting Amazon affiliate links into the bottom of the description. These links do change from video to video. If I'm talking about Sony stuff, I'm not going to have links to Canon gear, although I will have the links to the gear that I'm using to produce the video. If you happen to click on these links, even if you don't buy something, let's say you buy something else within the next 24 hours, I get a small fee for that. So if you go ahead and click on a link to, let's say, some batteries or to a Sony A7S III, but you don't buy it, but a few hours later you go and buy something else, I do get a, fee, a small finder's fee, and that's very helpful. That's extra money that comes into the channel that I can use to buy gear. And for those of you that have been with me a long time, you can see the changes over each month. As I make more money, I invest it back into the channel. When I started, I didn't have any lighting. I've got a ring light here. I've got two flat panel lights here, and I've got one flat panel light bolted to the ceiling. And you have no idea how much it costs to get the gear to bolt something to the ceiling. And this is an unfinished ceiling, so I can bolt it right onto the rafters. Then, of course, there's stands. I have three stands for these three lights. I have a stand for the microphone. This microphone actually goes right into the teleprompter. So that way, even though the camera is about 10 feet away, it still functions and, and rolls pretty smoothly. And you might be asking, why is it 10 feet away? Because I'm shooting with the 70D and I get the 51.2. So when you look at that crop factor, it, crop factor, it has to be far enough back. I've bought this table. Well, I've got this table. I bought this cover for it. I've got, what else did I get? Um, I don't know how many different screens I got. I got the, I got a taupe screen, which you'll see at first. That was one of the first ones I got. Then I got a green screen, which I used for several months. I bought a gray screen, a black screen, and of course, all the rigging to hold it. I bought a chair so I could sit at this very strange desk and fit into it quite well. I bought the teleprompter. I bought an iPad for the teleprompter. I bought an adapter so I could actually take this microphone and hook it into the iPad because guess what? You need an adapter for it to work properly. And of course, there's software that I've had to buy along the way as well. And there's some other things like memory cards. It's an ongoing process. For those of you thinking of getting into doing YouTube, you need to be honest with yourself. Now, I produced a couple of videos uh, about when I got to 1,000 views, when I got to, I think it was 3,000 views, and of course, when I got to 5,000 views. And it does take an awful lot of time. And for the first however many months you're not monetized, you're working for free. It's a lot of work. It really is a ton of work. And it's going to cost you some money. I put several thousand dollars into the setup already. And that doesn't include the Mac that I bought late or mid last year in preparation for stuff like this. And if we do that, I'm in the hole. But we should be honest with ourselves here. And I'm being transparent with you. I didn't really buy that planning on doing a YouTube channel. I was planning on getting into 4K and I knew I needed something that was beefy enough. That's why I got it. Does it help me with the channel? Sure. But I didn't buy it for the channel. So I could say I spent so much money that I'm in the hole, but I'm not. I am making a little bit off of it. And um, it's pretty much being tagged to what I call the technology fund. Things that support my filmmaking hobby, my photo hobby, which will allow me to get more and better gear. And one other thing, oh, and to tie it back to the Amazon affiliate links, so all, those, all that money that comes in, it's, it's not going towards a sports car or a really nice Mercedes or anything. It's just going back to the channel. What was that other thing I wanted to say? I can't remember. Anyhow, looking at the lens here, don't forget about the um, contest. The draw closes on July the 31st. I'll either have the, ra the, uh, the contest, probably take a day or two before I actually announce it because I actually have to go through um, the process of awarding it, filming it, and doing all that stuff. So I probably won't. I'll probably wait. I'll have to wait till the end of day, so midnight, um, 
Greenwich Mean Time minus 5, so that's New York time, is when it'll close, then I'll announce the winner the next day, then I'll have to do a filming of it, so you probably won't know who the winner is until the first few days of August. But hopefully by then I'll have my R5, so things will look a little better. But that's it for now, guys. The links to everything I talked about in this video, including gear, are found in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. All equipment used and notes are placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on the mobile app.